All right, guys, uh, moving on. Next question I got is from K.L. Martin, 1962. His name is Leon Martin, and uh, he, he gives some uh, little backstory about him growing up and his, from his, learning from his dad and grandfather. But he asked me, can you share a few things learned growing up in the family business as you did? I feel integrity was the greatest thing passed on to me by my family. If it was the same with you, I would love to hear some of the stories. You know, you're right. It's, uh, that, that is something that, that I gained from my family is, uh, you know, integrity. But uh, some of the things that I, that I can share about that is, was uh, hard work and determination. Being in a business like that, you've got, you, you're always seeing different things. So we, uh, we tried to take on anything that we could. And a lot of the jobs were uh, learning experiences for us. But, you know, just, just hard work and, and determination to get the job done. And the other big thing that, that we did, me and my dad in our, in our business, was we always treated people with respect. And we always tried to take care of the customers and not over, overcharge them for work. And we, we always felt that, you know, try to, try to be fair about what you do and uh, be honest about it, even if we... Uh, even if we had a, a ton of labor in something and you feel that it's, uh, you don't really want to charge a customer every, every single hour you've got it into a job, you try, to, you try to decide what's a fair price to charge somebody to do something. So you have to make those kind of judgments. And uh, as I said, just, just treat everybody with respect and, and uh, treat them like you're, they're your friend and your family and uh, take care of them customers because they They'll come back to you, and, and a lot of our customers love coming to our shop. They, uh, they just love the, the down-home feel there of the family business, and uh, a lot of times pe we would have people just come by, and they wouldn't even have any work. They just wanted to come by and hang out for a little while and talk to us. So that, that was always, that was always uh, fun and getting, getting to know people better. But, yeah, just... Uh, Treat people with respect and be honest with them and treat them fair. That's some of the things that I learned. Next question is uh, by Loving Junk 95 Is when you were growing up and throughout your work experiences, what has been some of the funniest things that have ever happened while working in your family shop or your current job? <laughs> that last part kind of helps me out a little bit. Uh, to be honest with you, we we all had good times in, in, in my shop, but uh, you know, to tell you the truth, me and Dad weren't ever really the joking type of guys with each other. I mean, we were just there to work and, and get the work done, so we never pulled pranks on each other. Uh, you know, every now and then, my dad tried to pull my leg, telling me something or telling a story. And uh, that's that's a that's something that I can recall that that went on quite a bit. Just uh, trying to have a little bit of a sense of humor every now and then. But we we were pretty serious about the work and just getting it done. And I, I can't think of any particular pranks that was pulled. I don't think we ever did. Just uh, there was times you know people come by and hanging out with us and talking to us that we we would cut up and joke and. And sit out there for a little while and have a good time. But that's 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 about it. Uh, yeah, you said it. Or at your current job, I will tell you a funny prank that I pulled on my my coworker when we were at our old shop. Is he had a uh, you know the big work table where we do the hydraulics. You know we have an airline run over to it, and uh, it was hooked over to the wall behind the saw, and it was fed down, and uh, all the hydraulic lines that came from the test unit they were all underneath this thing and came over to the table. Every now and then I'd, I'd go over there and whenever my coworker wasn't out there and I would unhook the airline off the wall, <laughs> he'd come out there and he, he has used an impact gun a lot, take things apart, put it together. <laughs> he'd come out there, I remember the first time he did it, he picked up that air, that impact to start putting something together, I guess, and he didn't have no air. He was, he was like looking at the airline, 
playing with it, like, hey, what's, what's going on here? And I remember he sat it down, and he was just sitting there. He was just looking like, what's going on? He went over to the lathe and hit the air gun over there, and he had air there. <laughs> the air compressor was running, so he was, he was, he was like trying to figure out why, how come he doesn't have air here. So he, he ended up going around the other side and, and tracking down the airline and then went over to the wall, and <laughs> he's seen it that I had it. The, what really threw him off was that instead of just pulling the whole airline out and throwing it off to the side, I actually had the end just stuck right there in the coupling, so it looked like it was still hooked up. So that threw him off at first because he thought it was still hooked up. And then he ended up going over there and reaching back, and he pulled on it, and it came out. So he hooked it back up. And I ended up doing that to him a couple more times, just uh, different periods of time there. I, I did that. And <laughs> he was wondering what – like, I guess he thought maybe it was blowing out somehow. Maybe the coupling was bad, but he never did ask me uh, if I was the one doing that. That was hilarious because I was down there on the lathe working, and I'd keep looking down there and watching him while he was trying to figure out what was going on with his airline. So that was a, that was a funny prank that I pulled on somebody right there. All right, let's move on to another one. All right, next question is from Paul Brown. He says, hey Adam, a comparison on different type carbide inserts would be cool. Shape, chip breaker, etc. for the lathe use. This, that's a little touchy subject to try to just talk about Paul. And uh, you know, everybody that's, I've got my, I've got my carbide insert tools that I use and every shop and every machinist has his own particular carbides that he likes to use, the turning tools. And maybe later on we can get a little more in depth on some of the inserts that, you know, when I'm in the shop, I'll do a little shop talk series and, and I'll, I'll get a little close up some shots of the inserts that I use. Uh, I, I, I learned how to use certain ones and I got familiar, familiar with, uh, certain inserts and, and I stuck with those because they work. So I'll just tell you my favorite turning tools, my, my favorite carbide inserts is a CNMG. I use those more than any of them. I also like the uh, WNMG, which is also known as a Trigon. You have six cutting tips on those. And uh, a good old fashioned TNMG, which is a triangular. You also get six tips on those. I will say that all of mine is the 400 series, so I use a 431 and also a 432 insert. And I, I tend to use the 431 more than the 432, and that's because it has a lot smaller radius on the on the corner, and and it's perfect for uh, medium to uh, finish machining. You're, if you're doing a lot of hogging and, and roughing, you want to use a larger radius tool, which would be like a 432 or even a a 433 size insert. So. That's, uh, that's about what I like to use is, is a CNMG uh, 431 most of the time. And uh, for carbide, I mean, I'm sorry, for cast iron, I've also got a uh, nice boring bar that takes a uh, TPG 400 insert. And those are, those are excellent for, uh, for cast iron and even uh, bronze, that kind of material. So, you know, maybe later on we'll, we'll kind of touch on that subject a little more in the shop and we can look at the stuff that I've got and I'll, I'll show you what I use. Because I do have some other ones also. All right, check that one off. And then let's find another one here. Okay. Uh, next question is from uh, Bill Moran. He says, a couple of thoughts. I would like to hear your thoughts on shopping for used machines. What are good models for the small shop? What to look for? How to check a machine for wear, etc. cetera. Uh, how much should we expect to pay? All right, let me, uh, let me, let me say something about that, why it's on my mind. Tom Lipton at Ox Tools, I know for a fact, did a video here not too long ago, a few months back, on, on this exact subject, on what to look for 
when buying a, uh, a used lathe. He used his lathe as an example on what to look for. So go find that video from Tom's because it's a really good video and he goes in, in depth on what to check for on a machine. So I, I'm not going to touch on it uh, on that part of it. Just go, go, go look for his video. Uh, shopping for used machines, what are some good models for the shop? Some of the, mo some of the most popular uh, home shop lathes out there seem to be uh, a South Bend style of machine. There, there's many of them that's about like a South Bend. Some of the older uh, American-made machines are, are excellent lathes to use, and, and, and a lot of the, there's a lot of them out there, and I, I just can't, I can't recall all the different brands. But, uh, you know, a South Bend, some guys like, to, if, if you're doing smaller stuff, the, uh, the Atlas and Craftsman lathes, those are really neat. Uh, LeBlond, LeBlond had a, a had some smaller lathes that are that are excellent. I used to have a 13 inch LeBlond, and it was one of them old ones too, one of them wartime machines, and that that's a good heavy duty lathe to use. So, uh, just you know, Google's your friend. So if you see something that you're interested in, do a do a big Google search on it and try to find as much info as you can. And you can also search on. Uh, practicalmachinist.com, the forum. There's lots of info on there that guys have already shared throughout the years. You get on there and do a search and you can find threads where people's already discussed lots of different lathes and uh, problems that they've encountered and how to, how to fix them, how to correct them. Uh, you know, another, another good machine that I've seen a lot of people seem to enjoy, if you're interested in even buying a new one, is Grizzly. They have several different lathes, all the way from a small little benchtop lathe up to an industrial gearhead lathe. Hey, sorry about that, guys. Uh, we had some visitors coming by to uh, stop by and talk for a little bit, so I had to shut the video off. But uh, I was talking about lathes there, used lathes, and I, I believe I had mentioned, started saying something about a Grizzly lathe. I've seen, I've seen several people on uh, on YouTube using uh, new Grizzly lathes and uh, I think for uh, somebody that wants to uh, invest a little more money in something that's new because it is nice to have a new machine you don't have all the wear on it and uh, you've got that sort of peace of mind that you can hook it up and, uh, and start running it I think Grizzly sells some pretty decent lathes for the for the, for the money so also consider that, go to their website and uh, do some research. And if you see something in the size machine that you want, do some, uh, do some Googling on YouTube because there's a lot of people that do little short reviews of their new Grizzly machines. Not only the lathe, but uh, little mill machines also. They, they've got small bench top mills all the way up to great big industrial mills. So, uh, so check out the Grizzlies also. All right, let's find another question here. All right, I think I'll answer this one here. This is uh, by Yan Wo. He says, how do you ensure the accuracy of your measuring instruments? Well, I, I don't ever send mine off to be uh, calibrated. But what I do is I oftentimes just check mine with standards that I have, the, uh, the standards that, that come in the mic sets. I will, I will use those quite often and, and check the mics and make sure that they're on. And every now and then I'll, I'll have a, maybe a couple tenth readings that's off and I'll adjust them myself. As far as inside mics go, I was taught never to trust an inside mic because obviously we've never had them calibrated. I use an inside mic like I would a telescoping gauge. I transfer it. It's a transfer tool to the mic. So you can check your mic easy if you have a standard. Make sure it's on. Use your inside mics to uh, measure the hole and then mic that with an OD mic. So to ensure the accuracy of my tools, the best thing is to t take care of them. Don't drop them. Don't bang them. Don't set them on the table and throw a bunch of tools up there on them. That's something that I'm always trying to teach my coworker at work. 
is to take care of your machinist tools. Keep them, uh, keep them out of harm's way and uh, don't abuse them. Don't slam them, don't drop them. If, if you drop a mic, the chances are that you, it's, it's going to be reading off and sometimes you can mess it up, you can bend it. Uh, there, there has been a couple in my shop that were accidentally dropped and uh, it messed it up where we couldn't use it. And uh, same thing at my other job. Somebody accidentally knocked a big mic off the table and uh, it messed it up. We had to send it out to stare it and they fixed it. So they, uh, so yeah, they can be repaired if you want to uh, spend some money. There's plenty of uh, companies that'll that'll repair your mic. So stare it. You can send them any of their tools and they'll they'll give you a quote on fixing them. So uh, how do you ensure the accuracy? Check them with standards and take care of them and don't abuse them. That's about the uh, best advice I can give you right there. Take care of your tools. All right. Come down here to another one here. This, this is uh, from Tiny Logic. And he says, what are your general thoughts on machining of machining in America? I'm sure you have heard many stories of the past and how things used to be and how some things have changed over the years. You're right about that. You know, growing up in a machine shop, you do, you do hear lots of stories about how things were done in the old days and, and uh, the, past, the past decades and, and uh, how things have changed so much. And it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a firm believer in Made in America. I'm an American and I'm proud of this country and I'm proud of the, the products that, that we build here and especially in the old days, man, the old machines. To me, this is some of the finest machines you can get. They used to, uh, you know, there was a lot of good machine tool companies and tool builders that, that put out good products. And I really hate that so much of that have been, has just moved overseas now and everything's imported. Not everything, we still, you know, America still builds some nice stuff, but, you know, like as far as machine tools, there's not a whole lot of machine tools that's built here in America anymore. And I really wish that could change, that we could start getting back to the products that we, that we used to always build and, and have that high standard and quality. Something, you know, a couple of the specific here that really just upset me was like Jacobs, the Jacob Truck, Co Truck Company, you know, they, their stuff's built in China now. And I, I got a new Jacobs truck Earlier in the year, I got a new one at work, and the chuck key doesn't even fit the chuck very good. I have to use my old chuck key with my older chuck on the new on the new chuck just to be able to open and close it good. And it's just a sign of that quality when it when it seems like when we shut our doors here and we send it overseas and somebody else builds it, we just don't have the same quality. And I think everybody understands what I'm getting at there. We, we all pretty much agree with each other on that. Nicholson file. That was like the standard in files here in, in our country. And they closed their doors. And now they're made, in, they're made in Mexico, I believe. Now, I can't speak for how good the quality is now on their me made in Mexico files. But it's just upsetting to know that, that they closed the doors. And how many of us Americans lost our job at that factory? You know, because they closed it here and shipped it out to, to another country. I have seen, I have noticed, uh, you know, watching news here and there that there seems to be a pretty growing trend on bringing jobs back to this country, and I hope that it keeps going. I just hope that companies keep bringing the work back and putting us back back to work because this country needs it, and I and I think we we really need it to. Uh, for this country to keep thriving. You know, we, we need lots of jobs here. There's a lot of people that's out of work. And I, I wanna see I wanna see the jobs brought back to this country and uh, keep these products that our country builds, keep them rolling. Good morning America, or no it wasn't Good Morning America, it's uh it's uh, ABC World News. You know, the past couple years they've been doing that segment on Made in America and I love it. That's probably my favorite thing to watch on the news is the Made in America, and they, 
they do a good job of getting out there and showing people the things that, that we make, that people build here in this country. And, and that's, I, I love it when they put the Americans, the American made products in the spotlight and talk about that. So I'm definitely on board for, let's bring this work back and let's start building some good products again. You know, the machine tools, I don't think that, I, I don't think that that would ever return. The, uh, the foreign markets sort of have, have that. And, but I, I miss seeing the, uh, the good quality American made machines. I'll tell you that it's, uh, when you, when you get on that old American heavy iron, you know, that they, they did a good job and they, they engineered that stuff to last a lifetime. That old American pacemaker at work, man, that thing's so heavy duty. It's an excellent lathe to run. It's heavy. It's rigid. Does accurate work. Our big Monarch that we used to have was the same way. Man, it was just a it was just a big stout machine. When uh, when you watch my videos and you see me using my Monarch, it's the same way. It was a quality built machine, and especially when you go through it and you read the old the manuals that came with it and. You can tell that they uh, they invested a lot of effort into to building a machine that would last a lifetime. So I hope that we keep bringing some of the work back to our country. I, I hope we do. I'm tired of seeing it all go overseas, but uh, I, I hope that kind of that, that's my opinion on on the subject there, on the thoughts of machining in America. So I'm gonna I'm gonna check that off and see if I can find another another question here. All right, I I kind of I ran out of the ones that I had already highlighted, so I might go through here again and and uh, pick out a few more to to uh, answer for you. Okay, so uh, I'll be back. All right, guys. Uh, I think that's going to be about it for all the questions. Uh, I, I went through my sheet there and looked over most of them again. And uh, there, there was a few questions that I missed, guys. And uh, I apologize if I didn't get to uh, your uh, specific question. Um, I, I've quite, I think I answered quite a bit. And I've been doing it for a while now. So I think I'm just going to kind of call it there. Uh, a lot of the questions were, were basically the same question that was asked by other people. So uh, I think I kind of answered most of them there. But I really appreciate all the support that I've gotten from this and, you know, all the questions that were asked of me. And, and I hope that you enjoyed my answers. I hope you enjoyed my little stories from the shop. Uh, I really do. I, I, was, I was hoping I'd have some more funny stories to tell you. But, uh, you know, I just uh, what, what you heard me say, that was about it. I, I'm sure I've got more stored away in my brain somewhere. I just can't think of them all right now. But but I, I had a lot of fun, and I tell you what, it made the trip go a lot faster. We uh, shoot, we made it up to Birmingham and, and passed, and it seemed like it was no time. But it was a lot of video to shoot, and a lot of video to edit and make into these videos. But I enjoy it, you know. And and so I'm up here. And we've got. We've got the rest of the week and uh, into next week that we're going to be here uh, relaxing and spending time with the family. And uh, this is going to be about it for me. I'm going to sit out here by the fire, have me a couple drinks every now and then, and uh, probably watch some movies with the family and maybe go get some meat and do some grilling. But, but anyway, like I said, I, I had a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Thank you for all the questions and uh, thank you for all the support that everybody's given me. And uh, I hope real soon that we're going to have some more interesting machining videos to throw up on the channel for you to watch. We'll just see how it goes. I'll, I've, I've got some more stuff on the back burner there that I can work on, but hopefully some more, uh, some more work will keep coming through, flowing through the shop, and I'll be able to show you some more stuff out there. And uh, we'll see how it goes, and maybe we'll have some more ideas for some shop talk videos for you, talk about some more tools and other things that's going on in the shop. And... Uh, Yes, that's about it. So, guys, I hope everybody had a, a great holiday and, a, and a, you know, a Merry Christmas and, and a, a Happy New Year that's coming up. So, from Georgia, me and Atlanta and Stella signing off. We're out of here.
Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll be seeing you soon, okay? Later.